Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, I thought I'd just skip the intro and get right to the stories. There are quite a few to cover, starting with the fact that Intel is seriously doing a ton of really awesome things with their GPUs to make them better in pretty much every way. Just a few days ago, they actually boosted their DirectX 11 performance by an average of 19%. Now, this is specifically for a few specific titles. I'll show you those in just a second but it sounds like this should be something that will ultimately affect pretty much every DirectX 11 title, but at least for now, it's only for a few select titles. Now, what's interesting is that the way that they were able to do this, obviously up until Intel released their discrete GPUs, pretty much all of their GPU drivers were for integrated GPUs. And as you can see down here, they state basically with integrated graphics, you can essentially assume that the GPU is gonna be the bottleneck. That means that anything that could have been done to move work back to the CPU to alleviate that bottleneck was a good thing. But obviously now that discrete GPUs are here and they're significantly faster, that isn't always gonna be the case. And effectively, that's what they've worked on here. And as you can see, it has a pretty big uplift in performance because of it. Remember that the average is 19%, but as you can see here, it gets all the way up to 33%. Destiny 2, 5%, League of Legends, 11%, 15, 17, 18. So on average, it ends up being 19%. Now, because what they're doing is effectively uh, putting things back to the GPU that they had originally delved out to the CPU, the more powerful the CPU, the less of a difference you're gonna see. This right here is just a regular, you can actually see it's a 13,400F, so a lower end CPU, but even when we get to the Core i9, the 13,900K, there is still quite a bit of a difference, but as you can see, that difference does go down. So 0%, but all the way up to 28%. In fact, the average here is 12% with the average, like I said, with the other one at 19%. And they aren't even done because that was just three days ago. Well, now it looks like the A380 actually just got a boost in clocks. Now we typically do hear about GPU drivers bringing better performance to GPUs. That's fairly common, but pretty much never do we hear about a GPU that's already been released getting a boost in clocks. Well, that is the case you can see with the A380. It says Intel's latest driver release has unexpectedly added another method of increasing GPU performance. According to a post in this forum, the new driver update apparently increased clock speeds going from 2000 megahertz to 2150 megahertz. So if you currently own an A380, you just got a free performance boost. Now, the reason we're seeing all these optimizations happen with Intel versus AMD and Nvidia is just because obviously Intel is very new to this while AMD and Nvidia have been releasing full-blown GPU drivers for decades now. And because drivers are such a huge part of GPU performance, Intel had a ton of catching up to do. At the same time, keep in mind that when Intel released their GPUs, they released them at a certain price based on what they could do then. So all of this added performance is just making them better and better. And next up for today, really big news, concerning NVIDIA GPUs. You can see right here, it says the NVIDIA BIOS signature lock has been broken. For those who don't know, NVIDIA since, and they state right here since 2013, so obviously the last decade or so, NVIDIA effectively killed video BIOS modding by introducing BIOS signature checks. Then with Maxwell, the 900 series, they added an on-die security processor on all of their GPUs. This effectively makes it where you can't flash another BIOS onto the GPU. So you can't kind of play around with different BIOS that are out there, like from third-party cards, things like that. And I have to say, it just kind of sucks. Well, believe it or not, two completely different independent developers actually released two completely different tools that basically allows you to bypass that lock. Currently, the VBIO signature check lets you bypass basically everything only up to the RTX 20 series, so you can modify the BIOS pretty much any way you want, while cross flashing is supported all the way up to the RTX 4090. So you can basically do pretty much anything with cards up to the RTX 20 series, but 
even up to the 40 series, you can still do some pretty cool stuff. As you can see, like it says down here, one of the things you can do is you can actually flash a BIOS that was meant for a factory overclock GPU and flash that to a regular MSRP card. This would obviously allow it to get higher clocks as long as it's cooled properly. But if you're looking at the RTX 20 series and below, you can actually do some things that are quite a bit more like for example you can actually raise the power limits which lets you overclock them even more basically if you are interested in this and you know what you're doing i will say that tech power up claims to have gone through the code and there isn't any kind of as you can see here viruses or trojans or anything like that so it does sound like it's safe but of course, make sure you absolutely know what you're doing, and I take zero responsibility if you were to break your card in any way, so like I said, just make sure you know what you're doing there, but you could effectively make your GPU faster for free. And next up for today, we have a very interesting story, but one that I do have to admit that I'm pretty disappointed in. Hopefully this ends up not being the case, I'll get to that in just a second, but Basically, Starfield is coming, and it's coming very soon. It's coming, as you can see, September 6th, and because of that, you're actually able to preload the game data in advance. We've obviously seen this with a ton of games over the years, but here's the thing. The PC version of Starfield, you can see it said it prompted some curious gamers to look into the files, primarily in an attempt to see what kind of technology it has specifically upscaling tech. Remember not that long ago when AMD announced that they were going to be the exclusive PC partner for Starfield, there were a little bit of worries just because there had been an article that effectively had come out right around that time from WCCF Tech that had kind of gone through and found out that games that AMD sponsored didn't have DLSS or XESS. Instead, they effectively only had FSR, which is AMD's upscaling tech, at least for a certain amount of time. So some people effectively got a little worried when AMD announced that they were the exclusive partner that when Starfield came out, it may not come with DLSS and XESS, especially since AMD made it official that FSR2 will be available in the game on day one, but they never mentioned if DLSS or uh, Intel's XESS was also gonna be there. So because of that, some people more or less scraped through the uh, Starfield game data and so far, it looks like DLSS and XESS aren't mentioned in any way. Now, you can actually see right here, it says, as revealed, the game files exhibit no traces of FSR 3 or any FSR iteration for that. So given the fact that FSR 2 is going to be there for day one, you'd think we would see it. So this may kind of prove that it doesn't really mean anything. But as they say here, a probable reason for that is because FSR's open source nature, allowing it to seamlessly integrate into the executable files. So that could easily be why we aren't seeing that, but it doesn't explain why we wouldn't see DLSS and XESS, meaning these likely aren't there, or at least they aren't there in the initial game code. Now, as video cards does state, there are really big day one patches that, let's see if I can get it right here, there are really big day one patches that often introduce features that weren't present initially. So maybe DLSS and XESS will be there in day one patches, but at least for now, it looks like it isn't in the game code, which means at least at launch, this game may not support DLSS. Now, I know that some of you are going to say, well, it doesn't have ray tracing or anything like that. So it's really not that big of a deal. But keep in mind that people still like to use DLSS and these upscaling tech for higher frame rates with higher resolutions on, say, older cards or lower end cards. Either way, it's not looking good. But hopefully, hopefully, like I said, day one patches will fix this and they'll add DLSS and XESS support. But time, as always, will tell. And next up, if you've been following this channel, to which if you haven't, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for awesome new PC hardware news as that's released. Either way, if you have been watching it, you know that AMD actually announced an RX 7900 GRE edition back at the end of July when it was released for $649. And that card was definitely an interesting one just because it's effectively a cut down 7900 XT for 650 bucks. With that said, the pricing, I would argue, matches fairly close to the performance, so it's not like an amazing performance card for a really low price. 
but that may in fact be soon to change. As rumors are swirling that AMD is preparing a new GRE edition and it's apparently set to rival the RTX 4060 Ti but for just $299. As you can see down here, this was allegedly confirmed by a tech blogger who apparently spoke with the boss of Yestin, who if you haven't heard of them, don't worry, that's because they're a popular manufacturer, yes, but only in certain Asia Pacific regions. Either way, basically Yestin confirmed that AMD is set to launch an RX 6750 GRE GPU. With that said, don't forget that the 7900 GRE, while it is a worldwide release, sort of, the card itself for the DIY market only released in China, so other regions are only able to get the card through system integrators. So you basically have to buy a PC with the card in it. Whether that's gonna be the case here, it's somewhat tough to say, but once again, given it is called GRE, which stands for Green Rabbit Edition, I, I highly doubt that we're gonna be able to get it at least for the DIY market anywhere but China. Still, it is a really interesting card and it could actually make some pre-built PCs really good price to performance. And lastly for today, AMD's GPU just got a massive update that should seriously make it more of a contender against Nvidia's GPUs. As you can see right here, AMD actually announced this in a blog post and they state, did you know that you can enable stable diffusion with Microsoft Olive under Xformer to get a significant speed up via Microsoft Direct ML on Windows. Now, if all of that effectively just sounded like gibberish, it's basically generative AI. As you can see right here in Stable Diffusion, the RX 7900 XTX gets up to a 9.9 .9 times increase in AI text to image generation performance in Microsoft Olive. So we're talking from 1.87 iterations per second to 18.59. And according to WCCF Tech, that actually makes it slightly higher generative AI performance per dollar than the RTX 4080. So this actually brings it right up to where Nvidia is with their RTX 4000 series. And of course, I do understand that a lot of you likely couldn't care less about any of this AI stuff, but at least for now, it's such a big deal in the market that the better AMD can compete with Nvidia, the better prices we'll see just because Nvidia is seeing way more competition. Then of course, that means they'll try and do much better with next gen. So we'll get bigger. So, so we'll get bigger performance jumps. So, so we'll get bigger performance jumps and the list goes on. So because AI is such a big deal, I would argue that the better AMD can do in AI, the better it is for everyone. And of course, if you are in AI, this is basically a free boost, a massive boost from AMD. So while that does it for today, what do you think about a lot of this free performance that we're seeing from AMD, Nvidia, and Intel? Of course, Nvidia's performance boost that you're gonna see isn't actually from Nvidia themselves, it's more or less despite them, but this is some pretty good news, I would argue, but like I said, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.